we are gatekeepers of the home and the nation, relentless in prayer and intercession. Today I am living as a servant of the Lord. Every dust on your marital life, every dust on your marital destiny must not leave this place with you. I said you must not leave this place with you in the name of Jesus. Enterprising and creative, we are bold, daring, and full of faith. We are Daughters of Destiny. Oh, worship him this morning. You cannot, I cannot do without the Holy Spirit. Somebody say healer, healer. Somebody worship the healer, healer. The way, the door, the way maker, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the one who was always, always to come. Everlasting King, we worship you, Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, Maki Laki Sata. You are the way, the door, the way maker, the bread of life, the, the lily of the valley. We enthrone you in this place. Thank you, Father. We worship you. In Jesus' matchless name, we worship. Father, we bless your name this morning. Again, we have come to drink from your fountain. We've come to receive strength. We have come unto the Lord. We have come unto the Lord. We have come to the Father. We have come to renew strength. Oh, yes. We have come unto the Lord. So this morning, we thank you for a fresh dose of strength that you're going to release. You have released already. We receive by faith in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this present house. For you are the ever-present God in the time of need. And you are in this present house. We give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you, O oh Lord, for establishing this church in the power of the Holy Ghost. If not for you, look at the journey of this church. Look at the journey of the set man and the set woman. If not for you, we won't be here today. We give you glory. We thank you for our daddy, our father. We thank you for Pastor Tony. We thank you for Mrs. Nkoyo Rapu. We thank you for all the members of this church. We thank you for the women for change. We thank you for where you have brought us from and where you're taking us. And we thank you for where we are right now. All glory be to your name. Lord, at this hour, I lift up myself. Use me even as your vessel, as your oracle. Speak your word through me expressly in the name of Jesus. All of you and none of me. Beyond my preparation, Holy Ghost, take over. In the name of Jesus, minister to every life. Cause us to live here better than we came. You taking the glory, we receiving the blessings. Everyone say amen. amen. Give him praise this morning. You may be seated. I welcome you all in Jesus' mighty name. I want to thank again and again my father and mother in this house. Uh, can we put our hands together for our wonderful apostle in the house, the pastor of pastors, Pastor Tony Rapu and his wonderful wife. And can you put your hands together for all the leading ladies in this house? All of you are leading ladies, you know. The Lord will use you for mighty things. He's already using you for mighty things. Before I go on, as I was leading worship, the Lord says we should just 
look back and give a chronicle of thanks. What has God saved you from in the journey of life? Can you think back right now and give him thanks? Give him thanks. If you know how to think, you know how to thank God. I don't know what you're yet believing for, but he's done so many things in your life. Give him a chronicle of thanksgiving today. For delivering me yet time and time again. For delivering my children, delivering my spouse, being with me. Oh God, arresting the hand of the enemy. Can somebody give God thanks? A chronicle of thanksgiving given today. Mazata kalibo sheleboho. Isata. Danger seen and unseen. Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you as women for helping us. Oh, saving us from shame. Can somebody give God thanks? Can somebody give God thanks this morning? I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. Somebody say thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to say. For all that you have done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Give him thanks. It is a good thing to thank the Lord. To sing his praises in the morning. Hallelujah. And so this morning we are here for strength. And I want to read from the book of Genesis 49, 22. That's where we're starting from. Genesis 49, verse number 22. There is something powerful about reading the word of God. It says, Joseph is a fruitful bow. A fruitful bow by a well. His branches run over the wall. I see somebody's branches running all over. The branches of your vision will run all over. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing somebody's vision begin to progress. I am speaking to somebody's life. The branches of that, that thing that God has put in your heart, not only will it grow roots downwards, it's going to shoot upwards. Not only will it shoot upwards, it's going to have branches. In the name of Jesus, I am speaking fruitfulness to your vision, to your family, to your life. In the name of Jesus, he says, Joseph is a fruitful bow. A bow is a large branch of a tree. He now says that bow is by the well. May you receive the refreshing of God. In the name of Jesus, I am speaking freshness. May you receive divine resources that will make you to grow. It is not enough to plant something. When you plant that thing and it doesn't have nutrients, if it is not watered, it's not going to grow. But the word of God is saying that Joseph carries the anointing of divine supply. Marakasata. I am prophesying over this house, over everyone, under the sound of my voice. May God make you to be fruitful and may you turn out in branches that begin to spread. Your business will spread. Your ministry will spread. The works of your hand will spread in the name of Jesus. So when I looked at the scripture and I looked at the Amplified, it's only those two translations that spoke about the blessing on Joseph as a fruitful bow. Can you give us the NLT? The New Living Translation. And when you look at this same scripture in the NLT, Genesis 49, 22, it says Joseph is the foal of a wild donkey. Now, that talks about a young, a mule, okay? That's an animal. That scripture is not talking about Joseph like a branch. Can you see? And so it says Joseph is the foal of a wild donkey, the, the foal of a wild donkey at a spring. One of the wild donkeys at the ridge. So give us the next verse. Why is it important for us to see Joseph as an animal? It says archers attacked him savagely. They shot at him and harassed him. Next verse. But, hallelujah, but, <laughs> but his bow remained taunt. Somebody I'm prophesying invincibility. 
It doesn't matter what the enemy shoots at you. It doesn't matter what they shoot at your marriage. It doesn't matter the attack. It says his bow remains strong and his arms were strengthened by the hand of the mighty one of Jacob by the shepherd, the rock of Israel. Some of you women, you go through things. People will not know how you survived. Are you with me? They can shoot at you. They can think you're bleeding. But somehow you're going to emerge. Because it's not by your strength. That's how we're going to learn how to tap into that strength. It says, but his bow remained turned. His arms were strengthened. When they think that ministry would die, it's a lie to rise again. When they thought that business would collapse, it won't collapse. Are you with me? When the, 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 the wickedness of the wicked gang up against you and think they know how to get you, God will say it's a lie. The Almighty will arise for somebody in the name of Jesus. And so, your arm will be strengthened. I'm speaking to the arm of your life, the arm of your strength, the arm of your marriage, the arm of your children. Be strengthened in the name of Jesus. No matter where the attack of the enemy comes in your life, it can be in your health. Remember the scripture. No matter where it comes from. It can be in your finances. The archers may shoot. It can be in your relationship. It can be in your marriage. Today may you be strengthened. By the hand of the almighty. There is something about the hand of God. The hand of God releases strength. Ezekiel chapter number 1 in verse 3 thereabouts, it says the hand of God was with me. When the hand of God is with you, the winds of adversity cannot take you away. Somehow you will survive. Somebody will survive in the name of Jesus. Can you give us that scripture again in the message? The message translation now brings about something else about strength. Genesis 49, 22. Can you give us the message translation? Hallelujah. Joseph is a wild donkey. A wild donkey by a spring. Spirited donkeys on a hill. Next verse. The archers. Can you read it please? With what? Shooting. Next verse. Hallelujah. Never underestimate the power of this arrow. The arrow of the tongue. It can bring down years of labor. Never underestimate the power of this particular arrow. When people shoot at you with their tongue, type in on the internet, you can get to a particular time that what you have worked for over the years, they, are, they want to destroy it and bring it down. But it says, you've got to hold, you've got to hold steady. Are you with me? The arrow of the tongue is terrible. And you know, we women, we are the ones susceptible to it. A lot of men, really, you do, a man will say, what are they saying? But a woman, when they tell you something, when you hear a word, you may not, for the next three weeks, you see the person, you remember the word. You repent, you call for Holy Spirit to help you. You wake up again, you remember. It takes a long time for you to get some things out of your spirit. And so this day, I am prophesying that we receive the strength to stay steady. I said the strength to stay steady. Someone here, the battle against you is the battle from the tongues of men. The battle against your marriage is the battle from the tongues of men. The battle against your business and your career is that from the tongues of men. You can't see it, but you can feel it. And you know you're a spiritual being. So some things affect you. And so today, receive strength. Receive strength to overcome. In the name of Jesus. Why do we need this strength if we're not strong? When we get to some crossroads in life, that attack, it can even make us to misbehave. When you rely on your strength to fight through some things, you may make a mistake. And so today, for that thing that wants to disgrace your life, your marriage, your calling, <laughs> receive the strength of God. In the name of Jesus, the strength of God will preserve you in the name of Jesus. So this morning, we're looking at strengthened. Why do we need to build our strength? Proverbs 24 verse 10. Proverbs 24 verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. 
There is no excuse. When adversity comes, you already, you've been empowered. The word of God is there for you. So if you don't build up yourself by being discipled, by studying the word, if you don't build up your prayer life, and when problem comes and you don't have any strength, the Bible is saying you are to blame. Your strength is small. Your strength is not supposed to be small. Why do we need to build up strength? Isaiah 35 verses 3 to 4. Isaiah 35 verses 3 to 4. It says strengthen the weak hands. So if you know your hands are weak, if you know you are weak spiritually, it's your responsibility to get yourself to the place of strength. It's your responsibility, responsibility to go and enroll in DTI, to enroll, to make sure you're part of where they're teaching the word. It's your responsibility to rearrange your schedule because spiritual things are important. It is not only Instagram and slaying. <laughs> Many of us have wrong priorities. But when problem comes, what are you going to do? I've seen many problems in the journey of 12 years of ministry, if not for God. So, it says strengthen the weak hands, make firm what? Your knees must not be feeble in the place of prayer. How can you say you don't know? Look at Esther. Every Jew was supposed, was going to be excommunicated. Uh, I mean, executed. Everybody knew. They said even in the provinces, they knew. But she didn't know. How come you didn't know? They're going to pay bride price. Your husband. With his family. And you don't know. Some things will be happening. That is going to affect you terribly. And you don't know. Then your spiritual antenna is very, very, very dull. You must be so sharp in the place of prayers. It is not until you see revelation. But somehow. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call unto me. I will answer you and I will shh. If you're a woman of prayer, you cannot afford not to be a woman of prayer because you've got many people under your sphere of influence. People, the devil must not come and take people like that, just like that, without meeting your altar. You're a woman that God has put there to stand in the gap. Esther did not know. In the provinces, they all knew. And as a matter of fact, when she knew, she gave, she said, give uncle some clothes. I said, I'm not here for your riches. Oh, you are busy tying gale in the white, in the asso rock. Huh? You're busy organizing. I'm not interested. And if you don't know why you are here, why God has graced you and made you to win that competition. If you don't know, then salvation will arise from somebody else. May you not lose your relevance. I said, may you not lose your relevance in the name of Jesus. And so we need to build up strength. First Peter 5 verse 10, it says, after you have suffered a while, then God will establish you and strengthen you. So I don't know what you're going through right now. You've got to arise from the place of your weakness and failure and say, no, this is not my end. I look at every challenge as an opportunity to grow. I refuse to see anything from a negative perspective. There's always a positive perspective to every negative thing. So when you focus on the positive thing, then you are going to get the pain from, you are going to get the gain from your pain. Many people go through pain, they never ever look back to say, what is the gain from this pain? What am I getting from this? And so that's why we are here in Ephesians 3.14. It tells us, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. Where? Where? In your inner man. So God supplies us with strength through the Holy Spirit in our inner man. We need the strength of God to pull through the maze of life. This life is like a maze, you know, twists and turns. Without the strength of God, many people have been shipwrecked. We won't be shipwrecked. In the name of Jesus, we need the strength of God to overcome the challenges of life. We need the strength of God to jump over the hurdles of life. We need the strength of God to keep us when faith is weak and hope is dim. Sometimes you get to that point. Faith is weak, hope is dim, but you've got to believe God. Because God will show up in yet a way you never knew he could. 
Because he's God. There is a depth in God that the highest Jew has never gotten to. Nobody knows him. He's ever new. So strength is needed when you want to take that giant leap in your life. You might never have done it before, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. <laughs> Nobody has done it like that before, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. And so you need that strength to be a pioneer. You need that strength that what God has told you, he has shown you it's going to work. You need the strength to push through the tongues of opposition and discouragement that can come from even very close quarters. Are you with me? I don't want to talk more. Are you with me? But God will help us. It's part of the journey of life. And so, Ephesians 3.16 is telling us when your inner man is strengthened, it can drag your outer man along. When your inner man is strengthened, it can drag you out of sickness. It can drag you out of pain. It can drag you out of disappointment. When your inner man is strengthened, it can drag you out of no matter the challenges. Your inner man, your inner man, focus on that inner man. That strength within that you get when you have your own personal experience with God. With your inner man strengthened, you can weather the stormy seas of life. You can pull through the challenges of nursing a handicapped child. When you're strong, you may, there may be people here, I've seen so many people in Nigeria, all over the world. So who did that child offend? Autistic. How is the child going to survive? How is the child going to cope? And so some of us have things we can't explain. But if you're strong, you can pull through. You can pull through. And God will still make a way where there seemed to be no way. With your inner man strengthened, you can pray through till your rebellious child is arrested by the Holy Spirit. Today I'm speaking to difficult areas of your life. Things that are disgracing you. Uh, things that are bringing reproach to your life. Uh, let there be a turn around in the name of Jesus. The word of God says I will overturn and overturn and overturn. Uh, till you get that which God uh, has purposed for you. That shame will be turned to fame. In the name of Jesus. And the name of the Lord is being glorified. Concerning that boy. Who is being glorified? So. You need strength to pull through. With the strength of God, you can face life again. Even after losing a loved one, you can face life again. Today, I am decreeing into your life. What money cannot buy? That which you need to turn your situation around. That which you need to take away that reproach from your life. May God release it into your life right now in the name of Jesus. And so you need strength. When you are passing through that difficult terrain, wisdom of the world will not lead you to success. But when you wait on God, he will give you strength to pull through that difficult terrain in the name of Jesus. And so, Psalm 18, 32 to 33 tells us, it is God that guards me with strength. He makes my way perfect. God guards me with strength. May God guard you with strength. He says he makes my feet like what? When you've got the hinds feet, you have stability. You have stability in that business, in that marriage. God will stabilize you in your area of wavering in the name of Jesus. May God release his abundant dose of strength into your life this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. So, quickly write this down. How do I exhibit this strength? How do I get this strength? Number one, in the way of the Lord. Proverbs 10.29. Stay in the way of God. Do not take the advice of people. You may be single here. You say the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. No, 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 no. Ha. If you make a mistake, it's better to be single than to go and marry the wrong man. Are you telling? <laughs> if I tell you what we see, we, who are counselors? I say after the choreography at the wedding, everybody jump. Then you finish. You come and meet us. Eh? One lady said, my husband, I packed the plate yesterday. He's supposed to pack the plate tomorrow. I said, eh? There is no feminism in marriage, oh. There is no equal, there is no women's leave inside marriage. It's wives, submit. You packed the plate yesterday, so your husband should pack the plate today. Because you walk in MTN and he walks in glue. They say, is equal right? <laughs> Doesn't work that way. So, <laughs> the way of the Lord will give you strength. Stick to the word of God. Stick to the things of God. Stick to the counsel of God. The way of the world will always weaken you. It's not going to put you in a position of strength. Number two, how do I get strength? 
knowledge and wisdom. Proverbs 24 verse 5. Proverbs 24 verse 5. Seek knowledge. Look for wisdom. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask. The wisdom of God will give you strength in any situation. It says a wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases in strength. Isaiah 33 verse 6 corroborates this. Isaiah 33 verse 6. When you seek wisdom, just pray and say, God, give me wisdom to deal with this issue. You'll be shocked. God will give you one superior strategy that they will be wondering, where did you get the idea from? Wisdom and knowledge will be the, can we read it together? Wisdom and what? And so, for you to exhibit strength, Isaiah 30, 15, in quietness and confidence, and I want to talk about this for us as women. Many of us are not wise. Many of us start right, we end up wrong. We start right, in a right position. Can we see? It says, for thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness, in quietness and confidence shall be what? For many of us in this world where you've got to prove yourself, where you've got to talk, where you've got to assert yourself, where, you know, those are the things they preach in the world. That's the principle of the world. Let people know what you carry. They do, do this, do that. Yes, those things are good, but what does the word say? In quietness and confidence. And quickly, I'm going to tell you the strength in silence. You must never forget these three strengths in silence. You can use silence as a shield. Silence as a what? Shield. Silence can shield you from arrows of the enemy. It can shield you when the attacks are coming. Because there are some things, if you go into the same battleground, the same battle zone, you cannot win. So use silence as a shield. Proverbs 38 verse 13, it says, but I as a deaf man, I heard not. Some things that will come to you, be a deaf man. You know why? The storm will pass. It will pass. Just keep still. Just weather the storm, it's going to pass. But if you say something at that time, you know that we are all being perfected. I'm not perfect, you are not perfect. The emotions can make you bring out things in you that are not supposed to come out and then they capitalize on it. So, you can use silence as what? Next, use silence as a weapon. You use a weapon to fight. When people are talking about you, when people are saying terrible things about, about you, they want to provoke you. They are saying, telling lies. They want to destroy your reputation, destroy what you've built. They, they are, just use that silence to fight them. They are waiting for you to say something, but don't say it. You confuse them. They don't know your strategy. They can even send spies to you. They can send spies to your gathering. They can do all sorts of things. They want to hear what you will say. And whatever you say can be... You use it as a weapon to frustrate them. Tell somebody, frustrate your enemies with silence. Ah, is she not seen? Can she not hear? You frustrate them. So use silence as a weapon. That's Psalm 39, verse 1 to 2. He said, I said, and I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my tongue with a bridle while the wicked is before me. You keep them at bay with silence. Number three. You've got to use silence to get power. They say silence is golden. In your time of silence, you dig in and begin to look for what God is telling you. In your time of silence, look unto God. And so this morning, I'm praying for somebody that you receive the strength of God. There is strength in silence. There is strength in love. There is strength in faith. There is strength in giving. There is strength in submission. And so, is there any strong woman in the house? Any strong woman in the house? A strong woman loves and forgives compulsorily. Is there any strong woman in the house? A strong woman is not loud but meek. Is there any strong woman in the house? A strong woman is just a power dresser but a prayer warrior on heels. You confuse them. They don't know that Maggie is at her. In the middle of the night your, hair, your eyes will be hot. But when they see you, 
one pastor came to our ministry. He said, I even want to see the woman they call her pastor. I was expecting one woman that would be looking holy. As a, she's even looking like a babe. Eh. We use it to confuse the enemy. You will enter enemy camps. They will think you're weak. This one, you just, uh, she's just looking fine. All these fine, fine people. But in the middle of the night, when you begin to take territories, in the name of Jesus, I speak as Katrina to the Bible says, uh, associate yourself together, all you people, and be scattered. Speak the word. It will not stand. Every evil gathering against the church of God, Mazatakali. You come out with your Mary Kay the next morning. Tell somebody, be a strong woman. Be a strong woman. A strong woman is not just a woman of charisma. She's a woman of character. Your character will be tested. It will be tested. A strong woman is a woman of self-control. How many of us can control ourselves in the face of aggravation? This morning I pray for you, strength for you. Rise up on your feet right now. As we begin to pray, rise up on your feet. Do you desire the strength? We get it in the place of the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice. Masatali broko. Say, Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me, O oh God. Rika sataya bagasanta. Release your strength to me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, strengthen my inner man. Strengthen my inner man, O oh God. Masatali broko shendegeli bagasanta. In Jesus' mighty name. We're going to pray with Hebrews 11:11. 11, 11. Can you give us 11:11? 11, 11? Hebrews 11:11. 11, 11. Hebrews 11:11. 11, 11. That's our first prayer now as we round up. Can we read it together? By faith, Sarah herself strength to and then she bore. Lift up your voice. Say I receive strength to conceive. Some of you need to conceive visions. Some of you physically, you need to conceive. Begin to ask God for strength. Some businesses that God will bring to some of you, it will blow your mind. It will blow your mind if you don't have strength. Hey, people will discourage you. Receive strength to conceive that great idea. In the name of Jesus, receive strength to bear fruit. Like Satayaba. By faith, Sarah receives strength to conceive. In the name of Jesus, I receive strength to walk upon my high places. Masatali Brokoshanda Gayaba. Strength to conceive great ideas strength to birth them I prophesy upon you today that strength to conceive what you have not done before people you, your family might not have done it your friends might not have done it but if God has put it in your heart receive the strength to bear it to conceive it and bring it forth in the name of Jesus Amen 2 Timothy 4.17 2 Timothy 4.17 2 Timothy 4.17 is our next prayer but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached. So Apostle Paul was a pastor. He needed strength to preach. I don't know what your own job is. You may not be a pastor. You may be in the property business. You may be in the educational sector. You may be a lawyer. Ask God. Say, Father Lord. As you are standing with me, release strength for me to fulfill my vision on my business, on my career. Begin to ask God for strength. Apostle Paul said, the Lord stood with me. <laughs> he strengthened me so that I can do, so that I could excel. As God, as a mother, you need strength to excel. As a wife, you need strength to excel. In the name of Jesus, Masatali Brokoshandagayaba, ask him for strength. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Colossians 1.11, Colossians 1.11, Colossians 1.11 is our next prayer. Colossians 1.11. Strengthen, can you give us from 10, from 10, Colossians 1.10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, and strengthened with all, with You need the strength of a mother the strength of a wife, the strength of an administrator. Some of you need the strength to be a, a, a big sister. You may have people in your, you know, 
your junior ones, you are taking care of them. You need strength in all might. Lift up your voice. Every area of my life, Father, release strength. I won't fail in one. In the name of Jesus, uh, Father, Lord, strengthen me with all might. In every area of my life, in the name of Jesus, Masa Taliba, lift up your voice. Uh, in my ministry, in my calling, uh, as a mother in my family, I won't be a successful pastor and a failed mother or a failure as a wife. Uh, oh God, round and about. Every area of my life, release strength in the name of Jesus. Marika Sandagayaba. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You're going to lift up your, your voice that any area of my life, any area of weakness, Lord, perfect me. Perfect me by your strength. In the name of Jesus, perfect me, oh God, by your strength. Perfect me, oh God, by your strength. In Jesus' mighty name. And so, Father, we bless your name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We receive strength in our inner man. The strength to walk through. The strength to arise. The strength to succeed. The strength to hold on to your precious promises. The strength to walk through in holiness and righteousness. Blessed be your name. To you be all glory. To you be all praise. In Jesus' name. Any strong woman in the house? Glory, give him praise right now. Let's keep clapping, let's keep clapping. That was an awesome message. Thank you very much, Ma. It's always a pleasure and an honor to have our apostle in this house. At Daughters of Destiny, we want every woman to know that help is always available. We are here to offer godly and practical counsel for various issues peculiar to you as a woman. Contact us today via our counseling hotlines 0708-307-6210 and 0909-328-8336. You will overcome. You are a daughter of destiny. Daughters of Destiny